If you aspire to be a great investor, there's no better training ground than the dynamic world of smaller investments. In this video, we'll share 15 valuable insights that can enhance your trading skills, regardless of the companies or share prices you're dealing with. So let's dive in and start your journey towards becoming a more successful investor. Number one, cut losses early. When you invest in stocks, it's similar to holding on to a band-aid. Sometimes the value of those stocks goes down and it can be painful to see your investment lose money. But it's important to know when to act. If your stocks fall below a certain limit you set in advance, it might be a good idea to sell them, even if it means taking a loss. Why? Because if you wait too long, the value of your stocks might keep dropping and you'll lose even more money. But by selling early, you have a chance to buy those stocks back at a much lower price later on, potentially making a profit in the future. So, it's like ripping off the band-aid quickly to minimize the pain and have a better chance of recovery. Number two, let gains run. Many stocks have the potential to keep rising and surpass expectations. Some of the best-known American companies began as low-priced penny stocks and now trade at much higher prices, like $10, $20, or even $50 per share. When a business keeps growing, smart investors hold on to their shares for the long haul. However, some people make the mistake of selling too soon, feeling proud of their 100% gains, only to regret it later as the stock continues to soar. To avoid this, it's crucial to regularly evaluate the company's performance. If they are consistently gaining market share, increasing their revenues, and attracting more customers, it might be wise to hold on to your investment for the long term. Number three, don't average down. Many investors try to fix their mistakes by putting more money into a stock that's losing value. For instance, if they bought shares that dropped by a lot, like 30%, 50%, or even 88%, they might buy more of those shares to lower their average price per share. However, there are issues with this approach. Firstly, it means the investor made a wrong choice with those shares initially. Secondly, if a stock is falling, there's usually a good reason for it, and it might continue to decline. Lastly, by investing more money in a losing stock, they're putting even more of their limited funds at risk in shares that are going down. It's essential to be cautious and consider other options when a stock isn't performing well. Number four, average up. Indeed, averaging up can be a more effective strategy compared to averaging down. When an investor buys a stock and its value starts to rise, it's a sign that their initial decision was correct. If the stock is in an uptrend, especially if the underlying company is performing well, adding more funds to this winning investment can lead to even greater returns. Averaging up allows investors to capitalize on their successful choices and potentially benefit from a sustained uptrend. However, it's essential to do thorough research and consider the overall market conditions before increasing your investment in a winning stock. Number five, paper trade. Many folks want to get into penny stocks but feel unsure about where to start. They might be worried about the risks or don't know how buying and selling stocks works. Well, here's a helpful solution. Try paper trading. It's like a practice run. You keep track of stocks you'd like to buy but you use imaginary money instead of real cash. This way, you can learn how trading works without any risk to your actual money. It's a fantastic way to improve your trading skills and understand the stock market better. And the best part is, you don't need any real money for it. Number six, the single biggest investor risk. Confirmation bias is indeed a critical concept for all investors to understand. It refers to the tendency to search for, interpret, and remember information that confirms one's pre-existing beliefs or opinions while ignoring or discounting conflicting information. This cognitive bias can lead investors to make decisions based on biased information rather than objective analysis, which can be detrimental to their investment outcomes. It's essential to be aware of confirmation bias and strive for a more balanced and open-minded approach to investing, where you consider a variety of perspectives and data before making decisions. Number seven, don't trust free. Getting free stock recommendations, 
especially in the realm of penny stocks, is risky business. Here's why. Some folks out there have shady intentions, and they mix those intentions with people's desire to make money. They might try to deceive lots of folks into buying shares of their not-so-greet company. That's why they offer their advice for free, whether it's spreading rumors, sending unsolicited faxes, or bombarding you with misleading information in free online newsletters. Their goal is often to make a profit for themselves, not to help you make money. So, be cautious when you come across free stock tips and do your own research to make informed decisions. Number 8. Mandatory Due Diligence Just like you wouldn't bet a lot of money on a casino game you don't know how to play, the same goes for investing in stocks, especially the riskier penny stocks. It's really important to understand where your money is going. Every company has many aspects to consider, and taking some time to learn about them will help you avoid unexpected surprises. So, before you invest, make sure you know what you're getting into and do your homework. It's a smart way to protect your money and make informed choices. Number 9. Buy what you know. A lot of investors make the mistake of buying shares in companies they know nothing about. Instead of chasing after trendy but confusing companies, it's better to invest in stocks that you actually understand. If you know how a company makes its money, what its goals are, and where the industry it's in is going, you'll be in a much better position as an investor. This knowledge gives you an advantage over others who might be investing blindly. So, stick to what you know when choosing stocks. It can be a wise strategy. Number 10. Stick to the good markets. When it comes to penny stocks, be careful about where you buy them. Some marketplaces, like OTCQX and Pink Sheets, are filled with low-quality companies. Investing in these places can put you at a disadvantage because you'll be surrounded by many bad investment options. The chances of success for investors in these lower-quality exchanges are quite low. It's like trying to find a diamond in a pile of rocks. It's not easy. So... If you're interested in penny stocks, consider higher quality exchanges for better investment opportunities and a lower risk of making a bad choice. Number 11. Keep doing what works, stop doing what doesn't. It's a smart approach to double down on the tactics that are consistently making you money while scaling back on the strategies that aren't working for you. For instance, if you consistently profit from mining penny stocks, but consistently lose with exchange-traded funds, it's a sign that you should adjust your investment strategy to focus more on what's been successful for you. This way, you can potentially increase your overall returns by emphasizing the approaches that have proven to work in your favor. It's all about adapting and optimizing your investment strategy based on your own performance and results. Number 12. Be wary of media. The media often focuses on reporting events that have already occurred, and they can create the illusion of relevance in the moment. However, as you pointed out, by looking at things from a different perspective, you can better discern which events are about to lose significance. In the world of investments, this is crucial. For instance, when the media hypes up certain stocks or industries, it's often a sign that they may be reaching a peak, and it could be time to exercise caution. History has shown that intense media coverage of trends like dot-com stocks or pot-penny stocks coincided with their eventual declines. So, as an investor, it's important to take media reports with a grain of salt and to seek a more comprehensive understanding of the market beyond what's currently in the headlines. This can help you make more informed and timely investment decisions. Number 13. Don't buy what everyone else is buying. Mob mentality buying is like when a lot of people rush to buy something because everyone else is doing it. This often happens with investments like penny stocks, Bitcoin-related companies, or during events like the dot-com boom or the Dutch tulip bulb craze. The problem is, when everyone is buying in this frenzy, the prices of these investments become too high, meaning you'll pay more than they're actually worth. And when you hear lots of people talking about these investments and everyone is jumping in, that's usually a sign that the craze is about to end. People might make a lot of money quickly, but they can also lose it just as fast in a matter of weeks or even days. So it's important to be cautious and not just follow the crowd when investing. Number 14. B. 
be honest with yourself. Investing in penny stocks might not be the best choice for everyone. That's completely fine. If you prefer other activities or have different financial goals, it's okay to skip investing in them. However, if you decide to invest, it's essential to use money that you can afford to lose, which is known as risk money. This way, if the penny stocks you buy don't perform well and their value decreases, you won't find yourself in financial trouble and you'll still be able to cover your essential expenses like rent. It's all about making responsible and informed choices with your finances. Number 15. There is no magic investing bullet. Many times investors keep trying different ways to make money with their investments but end up not succeeding in any of them. It's like they jump from one idea to another. For example, if a strategy like the stock-picking robot doesn't work for them, they might switch to trading options. When that doesn't bring the desired results, they might try short selling. And if that fails, they could move on to things like binary options, derivatives, foreign exchange, commodities, and the list goes on and on. This constant switching can make it hard to succeed because they don't give one strategy enough time and effort to see if it works for them. Before we wrap up this video, I'd like to hear from all of you watching. What's one key takeaway from this video that you plan to implement in your investment strategy? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep the conversation going. Your insights might just help someone else on their investment journey. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload and you can enjoy the excellent content I send your way.